Yeah, he's done it a lot. Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord God, and keep us well. Hear our prayers and answer, Lord, and I just pray for Roberto, Lord God, that you just come into his life by him believing on you alone and nothing else. And help this study, Lord God, and just thank you for the rain. For Jesus' sake we pray, amen. Amen. John chapter 2. Woohoo! Moving Thanks. away. Moving away. So, John chapter 2, we made it. One whole chapter done. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now this is the third day. Um, John chapter 1, verse 29. It says, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. Behold, the Lamb of God. Verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood his two disciples, that's John baptizing the people. And 39, he said, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and bowled with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. And then 43, that the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee, find his Philip, and says unto him. Now, the third day is not verses 29 and 35. That's John the Baptist. The third day was the third day after the 40 days being tempted of the devil. And marriage, the first marriage in the Bible was Genesis chapter 2. Or in John chapter 2. That's kind of interesting. We got marriages in Genesis 2 and John chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Cana of Galilee is, is seven miles north of Nazareth where Jesus was raised up as a, as a child. And then we got the mother of Jesus, that's Mary. That's plain and simple. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So, here we have this marriage, and the invitation, Mary's there, and the invitation goes out to her son, Jesus, and probably his other brothers and sisters, and along with his disciples. So you have Jesus, his mother, and his family, unlike the Catholics to say Jesus didn't have any brothers and sisters, yes he did. So the whole family is here, and we got to look at the fact is, we're going to see some things with Mary. It looks like it was a family of Mary, or Jesus, type relationship. And we'll see in a moment. Verse 3. And when they wanted wine, so they wanted wine. They either ran out, or... They didn't have any. When they wanted wine. That's, that's a particular. They wanted wine. Either there was no wine or the wine ran out. But when we get a little bit further reading about it. It looks like they. The, it looks like the, the wine ran out. Somebody didn't get enough wine. For, for the wedding. I, so when they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus. No, it keeps saying the mother of Jesus. It's Mary. Says unto him, they have no wine. So Mary comes to Jesus. They had no wine. What authority does Mary have at this at this wedding? It says when they when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Mary steps in. At this marriage, son, Jesus, there's no wine. So she's involved in this wedding, somehow. And she goes to her son. 
And Jesus said to her, woman. Now, no, that's, a, that's a particular statement. That, you know, he didn't say mom. He didn't say mother. He said woman. What have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. The woman was the standard greeting to Mary by Jesus. The wine. Look at Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. And it's kind of a cruel statement some people would say, but let's look at what Jesus was talking about. What Mary wanted and what Jesus was talking about are two ends of the coin. In Luke chapter 22, verse 17. Get there. In Luke 7, 22, 17, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst you. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, grape, wine, until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Now when we take part in the Lord's communion, we have grape juice, and that's the symbol of the blood, the wine. Grape juice is the wine of grapes. The Bible calls it when you take grapes and you freshly crush them to make a you make a wine it calls it new wine it's not wine that's been fermented or made into alcohol that's important for this study now mary says jesus they have no wine jesus said my time may come this is the time jesus is talking about jesus leaps all the way forward and i don't know who's in the room with them when mary says they have no wine but he's like this ain't my time this is where Jesus is going to. His blood. Not with the wine you drink. So, when you take the, the, the Lord's Supper in, in Luke 22, and in John chapter 2, it's to symbolize wine, grape juice, as a symbol of blood. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11:25. So even the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he's looking forward to the cross. First Corinthians eleven twenty-five. We're looking at what Paul has to say. Oh, ten. Eleven twenty-five. Paul, and at the same manner also he took the cup. There it is. When he had supped, this is the last supper, he said, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That's the Lord's Supper. That's wine. Now, some religions, some churches, the, their communion is intoxicating liquor. The, Epis the Episcopalians are known for their intoxicating liquor. That's not... That's not Bible. It's new wine. And we're going to see that. Where do we get that? We get it from the marriage of Cana. We already know, okay? I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. It's, he turns the water into wine. He turns it to new wine. Grape juice. Not fermented. Right off the bat. So, my hour has not come. That hour is the cross. Look at John chapter 5. So Jesus is 30 years old in John chapter 2, beginning his ministry. And the, 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 my hour, all right, let's look at, we got a few references here to look at. The very beginning of his ministry, three days after the temptation of the 40 days and 40 nights he fasted, and then the devil came along. Three days after that, he says, my hour, 
in John chapter 5, verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. The hour is coming. 528. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. The hour. In which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Chapter 7, verse 30. Listen, when Jesus is in the garden, He's not praying, to, Oh God, I don't want to die on that cross. He was ready for that time. He didn't want to take sin. John 7, verse 30. Then they sought to take Him, but no man laid hands on Him, because His hour was not yet come. At 6 p.m. on the Passover, Abbot 15th, I think it's the 15th now. Oh, Abeth, the 14th, maybe. I forget that. At 6 p.m. is when Jesus Christ will come. That's the hour we're talking about. When they were to kill that Passover lamb. Chapter 8, verse 20. And the, these words thank Jesus in the treasury as he taught them in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Again, chapter 12, verse 23. John's Gospel, we know what that hour is by what we're looking at. John 12, 23, Jesus answers and answered them saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. There it is. Verse 27, same chapter. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Run that all the way back to John chapter 2. 13.1, John 13.1. And all we're doing is we're, we're looking at the Scriptures. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was to come, the Passover. He is the Lamb of God. He is to be the Passover death of the nation of Israel. That particular moment, 6 p.m. That's the hour of His death. We know that from the Old Testament Scriptures. In one more place, 17, John 17, 1. This is, the hour is the time of Jesus' death. In John 71, these words thanked Jesus, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, and he's on his way to the cross. There's no stopping him. So back to John chapter 2. So Mary's talking about wine for a wedding. Jesus is talking about his blood for the marriage supper of the Lamb. We've got two marriages, two different total marriages, and we've got two different blood or wine. And when you study chapter 2, it's just the marriage of Cana and the miracle Jesus turned the, blood, the water into wine. We're looking at the cross of Jesus. And we're looking at the marriage of the Lamb, the bride, the church to Jesus Christ. But... That's missed because, all right, let's hurry up and do chapter 2. Look, we did a chapter. That's why we're going slow. So, verse 5, his mother says unto the servants. Now, I don't know how you mark, the, I don't know how you mark your Bibles. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's, that's the words of Mary. That's the last words of Mary in the Bible. She says nothing else in the Bible. Though she's there, the Bible will never record any other words but whatsoever he saith unto you and do it. There are Catholic there are Catholic tracts out there where they say Mary 
And they quote this. Whatsoever Jesus saith that you do it. And then they'll say, Mary, Jesus never said worship his mother. And he doesn't. There's one track called Mary's Commandment to Catholics. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's the last words. Though you'll see Mary later, she'll be at the cross. She'll be in the book of Acts. But the, and it's really, you can't say the last words of Mary because the, the last recorded words of Mary, the mother of Jesus, is John chapter 2, verse 5. Though she said many things, the Bible says that's, that's the last thing recorded by her. Now you would think if she's the mediator, the queen of heaven, you would think from John chapter 2 all the way to Revelation 22, she would have more to say. Recorded. Nope. And there were set there six water pots of stone. So, it's a marriage, verse 5 and 6. It's a family, or Mary was given the charge at this wedding that she goes up to Jesus, we need more wine. Now whether it's her family, or she was put in charge, somebody didn't order enough wine, she has a responsibility, and she turns to her son and says, Son, we need wine. We ran out. We're going to run out. And Jesus gives us the death of, of him, and then the marriage supper of the land, real short. you got to study the scripture to see that. And then she gives us whatsoever he's saying. So now we have, now we have six water pots of stone. Now Jesus Christ is the rock. <clears throat> six. Revelation 13, 18. Revelation 13, 18. <coughs> Letting the scriptures talk. I'm not afraid to go find the scriptures to see what the scriptures say. And I'm not going to go so far, you know, all right, you know, give you the scripture because many people are lazy. They, they won't go search the scripture. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Alright, you want to be wise? Let him that understand. You want to understand? Counting the number of the bees. Oh, here we go. You know, the mark of the bees. For it, for it, is the number of man. And his number is 666. Six in your Bible, if we go back to John, is the number of man. One is unity. Three is the Trinity. Four is the earth. Five is death. Six is the number of man. And the Antichrist takes that number. So there are six, the number of man, water pots of stone. After the manner of purifying of the Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, Jews, no Gentiles. That's important. You're not going to find the Gentiles in Matthew, you're not going to find them in Luke and, and Mark, you're not going to find them, well, you do find them later on. The Gospels are primary to the Hebrews, to the Israelites. It is wrong to go in the book of Matthew and establish your church philosophy when there is no church in Matthew. And I understand that today because I have been told quite often now that they consider Daniel, Meshach, and Indigo Christians. They are not Christians. And the Bible says in the book of Acts they were first called Christians in Antioch. You don't know how many churches I've been in and Matthew, Matthew. That's not church. It's Israel. Hebrew. Like the book of Hebrews. Duh! 
You don't know how to spell Hebrew. You don't know how to spell church. But we'll move on. I have weird doctrines. So purifying means washing. It were containers, the stone containers were for cleansing. Washing by the Jews. It was never meant for drinking. Now, I, I don't know if the containers were for washing the feet. Washing the pots and pans. Washing off the tables. I mean, there's one point they're going to accuse Jesus. You know, your disciples are not washing their hands. All right? There were set six water pots of stone after the man in purifying of the Jews contained two or three firkins apiece. What Jesus is going to use for a container for wine is what people use to wash their hands, maybe their feet and the plates and the tables and all that. With COVID-19 in 2020, they would have a total freak out. Imagine, you know, they tell you, wash your hands, and they sing, sing a little happy birthday song. Imagine you go to these stone pots, and you're washing your hands, singing happy birthday, and then you walk over, and you grab your cup, and you get the... <laughs> uh, what? That's God. It says, again, after the man of purifying... This is water for washing. It was not water for drinking. And nobody knew that. And we'll see that in a moment. So, now a firkin, freaking firkins, is about eight or nine gallons. And there were six of them. So... 27 gallons for a container, wherever it wanted to be. That's a lot. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. So evidently, they are not filled. This marriage is lacking. They run out of wine, or running out of wine, and the manner of purifying the barrels, I'm going to call barrels, but the water pots of stone, the water pot, they're not filled either. And they and watch it. He says, fill, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. They listened to Jesus. They listened to Jesus so much that they filled them. They not, not only did they fill those water pots, but they filled them to the to the brim. You know, what a, you know what a Christian today would do if Jesus would come fill those things with what? Well, how much do you want me to fill it with? That's not my job. You want me to fill them with water? I'm the deacon. I'm the pastor. I'm the TV evangelist. But... Look at what they did. Jesus said, Phil. And I, I'm going to use it with Tracy. I would ask her to fill my coffee cup. Tracy had a bad habit. She filled it. It would be spilling all the way from the kitchen to where my seat is. She filled it to the brim. Mm. Now, what I mean, Phil, is fill it so you don't spill it, but there's enough in it. My filling is enough. I don't want to spill it. You know, they went and filled it to the brim. They went above and beyond what Jesus told them to do. So, okay, give it. So they were obedient, verse 8. And he says unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor in charge of the feast. And they bear it. Remember these, these water pots were used for cleansing. Fill them to the brim. We did, sir. All right, now draw out. Get your cups and wine. This was cleansing. Whatever they washed. Jesus says, now scoop out, get out. You know, you go to a punch bowl and you, you, you scoop out the punch and put it to a, that's what they're doing. 
So, from the water pots dispense. And draw out now, bear unto the covenant of feast, and they bear it. They, the, the servants are doing what Jesus told them to do. When the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine. Alright, look at verse 6. They were set there, six water pots of stone, after the man of purifying the Jews contained two or three firkins of feet. Jesus said unto him, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they buried it. When the ruler had tasted the water that was made, where did it say that Jesus turned that water into wine? Where are the actual words of Jesus? He didn't say nothing. Who is the person? The ruler of the feast comes up. Now the Holy Spirit tells us that the water was turned away. Not the ruler of the feast. The Holy Spirit is telling us that when that ruler came up and, and they're, they're, they're complimenting the wine, the water that was made wine. Jesus said, fill those things up with water, now bear it out. They, it has already been turned to wine and nobody knew it. So when Jesus said, now draw out and bear it to the governor of feast, you got to wonder, did they know what had happened already? Or are, are they the barren? He wants us to give them water? Is, is that the case? Somebody's going to be mad. Because he didn't say no magical words, if I can say magical words. He didn't do no hocus pocus. He didn't do laying on him. He says, fill them up. They filled it to the brim. Okay, now bear it to the people. Now, as far as they, what they're concerned, this is water because we filled it ourselves. All right. He said, take it, scoop in your thing, fill everybody's glass. I don't know why he wants to give us water, but you see how obedient they are? As far as what we look at and what we see in the scriptures, they don't have any idea yet that has been turned to wine. Unless the color has been changed and the smell has been changed. But there are no words or actions of Jesus to say already that this water is turned to wine. And we read by the Holy Spirit, the ruler of feast had tasted the water. Tasted the water that was made wine. They put water in and Jesus changed it to wine. And knew not whence it was. They had no idea it came from purifying pots. Now, it, now let me be a little carnal here for a minute. We're at a wedding. Fill everybody's wine glass. Okay, let's make a toast. We want to toast a happy couple. In that moment, everybody puts their glass to their mouth and take it. Oh, by the way, it came from purifying pot. They would all spit it out on the ground. Yeah. It what? We washed our hands and what? Yeah. But they didn't know. As far as they knew, it came from wine bottles. Not from water pots. They knew not whence it was, but the servants knew which drew the water knew. <laughs> hey, they're drinking out of the, the purifying water fuss. <laughs> what do you mean it tastes like wine? We, we, we put water in there. We didn't fill it with wine. What water was in there, we washed their feet, we washed their hands, we washed them. What do you mean they taste wine? That's not what they put in the pot. And the governor of feast called the bridegroom. So, here is a miracle. And we'll read in a few moments, this is the first miracle, and it is water being turned into wine. What was the first miracle to the nation of Israel? Moses turned the water into blood. Now, you don't see the Lord's Supper in that one. 
You know that the star of David is not the national symbol of Israel. The national symbol of Israel is water being turned into a red substance. I would say that that wine was red wine because blood is red. So much things you can get with water and blood in the Bible. And when they pierce the side, I forget if it's water and, or is it water and blood or blood and water. But when they pierce the side, the Bible says water and blood came out. You don't see that in John chapter 2? You don't see that when he says, take the wine. He said, this is the, this is the symbol of my blood, which is shed for many. See, it's more than, and when you deal with somebody, a Christian or anybody who wants to drink wine for a living, didn't Jesus change the water into wine? Yes, he did. We'll read on. Verse 9. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. The guy, you know, this is the main guy at the wedding. And said to every man at the beginning to set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine unto... It's wine. No, I thought it was water. It's wine. It's a miracle. And he says, you kept the good wine. Until last. So they went through all the wine. It's been a, it's been a marriage ceremony for a long time. And they ran out of wine. And he says, what you do is you, you start off with the good wine and you work your way to the cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. But he says, listen, we come to this point in the wedding feast which lasted many days. Man, you brought the good wine. That's the wine that Jesus made. And Jesus does not make alcoholic beverages. That is grape juice. Pure, undefiled grape juice. And, and the people at the wedding are like, wow, this is great. And they're not getting drunk. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cain of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed them. This is a sign to Mary and his brothers and sisters. This is a sign to the disciples. This is a sign to the servants. I am the Messiah. I came with signs and wonders. And the very first sign recorded of the life of Jesus is turning water into wine, where Moses and the law turned the water into blood. Now, I'm going to step off another verse real quick, but we'll come back to it. And after this, he went to Capernaum. So the marriage supper is over, right? And they'll say, did not Jesus turn the water into, into wine? Did he? Yes, he did. Now, we just read verses 1 to 11. Show me the verse where it says Jesus and the disciples drank it. It said the ruler of the feast and the, and the people of the, of the wedding. So my reaction, dude, you know, I want to drink. Didn't Jesus turn the water into wine? I said, yep. Open to John chapter 2 and show me where he drank it. And it doesn't even look like... It says this is the beginning of the Jesus in, in Galilee. It doesn't even look like maybe Jesus even stayed. I don't know. But the Bible speaks about we're not going to look at it. We're looking at new wine. That's when you take grapes and you make them grape juice. Unfermented. When I had my church in Norwich, when we partook of the, of the Lord's Supper, and we had no set time, we would go to the store and we would buy grapes. And my wife Lisa would put the grapes in the juicer. And we had fresh grapes juice. From the grapes that we made. And listen, I, there, you, you go to the store and you buy Welch's. <laughs> That's the purity. There's nothing wrong with that. But I set in my heart new wine. I'm going to go get grapes. And I'm going to turn them into grape juice. For new wine. And there's nothing wrong with Welch's. 
And any church uses Welch's, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you use intoxicating liquor, grape, wine, juice, you've got something wrong. You haven't studied the Scripture. And we can go into years studying Scripture about alcohol, but we're not going to. But, look at this miracle. Now, the governor of the feast, verse 9, said, hey, verse 9, this is great. You saved the best for last. Imagine at that moment if they would have told him. Or, imagine the guy, I mean, i got to wash my hands. Oh, no, 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 don't use those water pots. i got to wash my hands. No, that's what the wine's in. What? Well, that's where we've been getting the wine now. That guy would go into the man. Stop drinking! <laughs> Call the ambulances. We gotta have our stomach pumped. At least that's what they would do today. Jesus, all right. You know, didn't Jesus turn the water into wine? Look at the water he used. Purifying water. It was used for cleaning. There were impurities put in that water. Like I said, I don't know if they washed their hands in, but they didn't have sinks back then. They didn't have hot and cold running faucets. And they were strict on washing their hands. I, I don't know if John talks about that, but the other Gospels, they, they, they ball out Jesus' disciples because they're eating their food without washing their hands. COVID-19 in Jesus' time. But the laugh of the thing is, what if this was used for washing your hands? And Jesus said, fill it. And not only did they fill it, they filled it to the brim. Jesus said, all right, dip in the, the, the ladle and, and start pouring it out. At what point did those servants realize, hey, this ain't water? And they may have been scared. You see what you're talking about. He just asked us to fill everybody's cup with water. They're asking for wine. Imagine their amazement when, whoo, this is the best wine we ever had. And they probably looked over those things like, we put water in there. That was not wine. Listen, that those six water pots had water. We were using it to wash whatever we washed with. And we filled it with water as that man Jesus told us. How on earth did that get wine? So it was a miracle to those who the servants, and they would have been servants. And it was a miracle to those people that were drinking it. And that it was so good of a wine, they said this was supposed to be first. And then what did Jesus say? The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Another thing we find in the scriptures out of John chapter 2. The, last shall be, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In the wine. And when Jesus Christ offers his blood upon Calvary's cross, it is not fermented wine. It is the pure God blood, Acts 20, 28, the blood of God without impurities. If you could take the blood of God, Jesus Christ, and put it under the microscope, it would blow away all scientists. Now think about that. If you had a drop of blood of Jesus <coughs> and allowed them to put it under the microscope, no infirmities, because he was without sin. No cancers. He was not a diabetic. He had no diseases. It would have been the most purest blood to be ever to be pure. This water that was changed into wine was much better if you would take a grape and press it fresh. That's what Nehemiah did. When you come to the book of Nehemiah, he says, I took grapes and I pressed them into the cup. Nehemiah took grapes, he put the grapes in the cup and he pressed them and made new wine. 
And the people at the marriage feast are saying, oh man, this is the best wine. And does not the book of Proverbs some and say that wisdom has girded her table, she set forth her pillars, she has set forth her wine. Her mixed wine. This is not mixed wine. This is wine made by Jesus from water, and you see what the blood of Jesus Christ will do. It marveled the people. And this is the beginning of the miracles of Jesus. So, if it's the beginning, the begin, not the beginnings, the beginning of the miracles, plural. The beginning, the beginning. In the beginning, God. So don't give me no nonsense that when Jesus was seven years old, he was playing with his father's hammer. That he, 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 put, he put up this Christmas tree, and there was a miracle the tree lit up. There were no other miracles until John chapter 2. He didn't have the revelation of all the answers in school because, no. The, this beginning, this beginning of the... There were no miracles of Jesus unto now. And I've heard a ton of them. Everything that Jesus did in the carpenter shop. He made wooden toys that came to life. Now that's Santa Claus. And there is no Santa Claus. The first miracle of Jesus is at 30 years old in Cana of Galilee. It was at a wedding, and the very first thing was the very first thing that Moses did. What was the first sign of Moses? The burning bush. Moses had nothing to do with that burning bush. Well, he, he the, the, the rod to a serpent. You think Jesus Christ is going to liken himself to a serpent? The only way he's going to liken himself to a serpent, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so they show shall they lift up the, the Son of Man. All right, he put his hand into his shirt and came out leprosy. There is no type of leprosy that represents Jesus Christ. Next, Moses turned the water into wine. If Israel wants a national symbol on their flag, it would be water and blood. Water and wine. Not the st Matter of fact, the star of David is the star of Rip Man, and you see it in the Bible as a fallen god. So, did Jesus turn the water into wine? Yes, absolutely. Now, show me where Jesus drank it. And you have recorded in John chapter 2, the final words recorded by Mary, even though you'll see Mary later on. That's quite interesting. And the last words of Mary in the Bible is, Whatsoever my son saith, do it. And he never said, put any faith and trust in his mother at all. Lord God the Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you that it is pure. I thank you, Lord God, that that blood of Jesus is the blood of God because Jesus is God. And anybody who says that Jesus is not God is they're rebelling. They're a type of antichrist and they're not to be believed. Lord, I thank you for this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.